Hi, today I'd like to talk about some of my favorite new acquisitions. Okay, the first one is this magnificent Martelet fish platter. Okay, so Martelet was something created by Gorham in the 1890s. By then, most silver was made by machine. And in one department, they threw the machinery out and they went back to making things by hand. Okay, so that on this fish platter, um, it's unusual, it's museum quality because of the motif. Most martelet was floral, where this has dolphins on the side, it has this child in a seashell with reins in its hand uh, with fish in front of it. Uh, it has fish up here. Here it has another child in a shell, reins in its hand with dolphins in front of it. Very unusual. You never see children um, on Martelet um, and they say mainly flowers. So that's what makes this piece so special. I love the marks on this piece. It's a big, bold eagle above the Gore mark, which is the Martelet mark. Below it, it has the number 366 in a little circle. Okay, so Presto came up with this really good book on Martelet. As you can see, it's quite dog-eared. I use this book a lot. And then it lists by number of all of the Martelet items. And this fish platter, number 366, was made in the year 1898 and sold for $160, which was um, an extremely expensive piece of silver uh, for that period. So number 366 uh, means that out of the 8,700 pieces of Martelet, it was in, in the very first group the very earliest work that Gorham did. Okay, other things that I really like. This is one of my favorite pieces. This is the pattern Tiffany Persian. Look at the great detail here. There's flowers that are pierced. It's just a, a beautiful thing. It's got rose gold ends on it, and it really works cool. So here's how it works. You, you would put your hand in there and then you just get your salad or other item and you would just um, pick it up with it. Very neat. But what really makes it really cool is that these come apart easily and then you can make a large salad set or a stuffing spoon or a big buffet fork. You know, this must not have been a, a commercial success. I don't know if it was too expensive or, or what. See, this is the second one I've seen in the last 30 years. It's a great idea. Why was it poor marketing? Was it the cost of the item? I don't know, but you see very few. In Europe, they did make salad tongs, which were not handy in that they came apart like this, but they did, it was not an unknown item. In the United States here, Rare, if ever, do we see one of these. these. This is really great. So, okay, next item. This is a really cool cognac flask by Whiting from the 1880s. This piece is different on so many levels. The shape is unique. It's got the little grape supplied. It's got a rabbit up here. It has an owl in a tree here. It's acid etched and bright cut. It has an acid etched monogram. It's just so unusual. It's exactly the kind of thing that I, I like to, um, to have because I've never seen anything like it. I probably will never see one again, but I will enjoy it. It's been sitting on my desk recently because the pieces that I really like, I put on my desk and and gaze at and play with, you know, for, for a while before they go up for sale. Okay, now the, the last thing for today is a group of lap over. Now lap over was done by Tiffany in 1880 and they did a variety of ways. They did lap over plain, which is kind of boring, lap over 
applied, which had like gold bugs and creatures applied to it. Really cool, really rare. They did lap over acid etched, which again, pretty rare. And then very seldom seen, museum quality. They did lap over with uh, where it's indented into the piece, the gold. And so here are six knives, and these have the inlaid gold creatures. So this one is rabbits, another one is leaves, another one is crabs. So how much inlaid uh, lap over do we see? Almost none. I'd say we get a group maybe once every 15 years looking really, really hard. So absolutely museum quality, you know, really well done. Lots of hammering on these pieces. They're special. With that, we got in about 200 pieces of lap over acid etched. Uh, and some, some rather unique pieces. So here's a pastry fork. This one has acid etching, it has a motif that is kind of ordinary, it has leaves. Here's a teaspoon. Again, uh, the motif is flowers, um, it's okay. Knives are really hard to find in the lap over acid etch. This one has ducks on it, that's, that's a good motif. Here's a coffee spoon. Uh, this one has a big crab on the top. Uh, that's that's a, a neat motif. Here is a butter spread. Now butter spreads are very hard to find in this pattern. There's many things have little idiosyncrasies. You know why are butter spreads hard? I don't know. Gumbo spoons very difficult. Here's a fish fork, and this has a starfish on it. It was left to the silversmith's imagination what he was going to put on these items. Here's the piece that really is exciting, I think. This, this is a melon fork. So for your cantaloupe or watermelon, you would slice it, and then you would pick it up and you would eat it. There were all kinds of these knife, fork, cheese knives, etc. at one time, and then they all sort of fell by the wayside. It was determined to be not good etiquette to eat with a knife. This one has, you know, a um, catfish on it. Okay, I think that lap over is actually underappreciated. You know, it's very desirable, but it, as much as, you know, people like it, I don't think they still appreciate how difficult it was. So the, the process was that you would get, you'd make a handle, and then you would dip the handle in wax, and, and then you would cut a design, and then you would dip it in acid, and then the acid would eat away quicker where you did the cuts. Compared to the way they make silver now, where they just drop, forge a piece down and it comes out, this was very painstaking. And as I say, you very seldom see two pieces alike. So, to design individual pieces, uh, cut the design, use the acid to um, create the design, and you come up with something spectacular. You can see why it's only made during the 1880s because uh, the labor was phenomenal on these pieces. So anyway, those are my favorites of the recent acquisitions. Thanks.